What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new, if you could please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications, that way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. So in today's video, I'm going to be briefly talking about giant water bugs, specifically the species Lethosaurus medius. I'm also going to be showing off how to build a basic enclosure for one, and towards the end of the video, I'm also going to try to attempt to get bitten by one, and venomated. So, that should be very interesting. I've never been bitten by any species of giant water bug before, so I'm very curious to see what their venom is like. So without further ado, let's just get right into the video. So this giant insect right here is what's known as a giant water bug. There's many different species of water bugs in the world, but this particular one is Lithosaurus medius, and it can be found in the western states of the US. Before I continue the rest of this video, I just want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to Peter Clausen at Bugs in Cyberspace. Uh, so I originally ordered two giant water bugs from bugsinsyberspace.com and when I received my package, I ended up not only receiving two giant water bugs, but I ended up receiving an extra one as well, so a total of three. So I just want to say thank you so very much, Peter Clausen at Bugs in Cyberspace. Um, I was extremely thankful and speechless when I saw it. I, I was like, wow, that, that's very generous. So thank you so much. If you guys don't already know Bugs in Cyberspace, they are a great, um, it's a great website where you can purchase live insects. Um, follow them on YouTube, on Instagram, and check out their website. I'll leave the links in the description. Giant water bugs often get mistaken for beetles. But in fact, they're not beetles at all. They're what's known as a hemipterin or a true bug. If you haven't already watched my assassin bug video, I would highly recommend you go watch it because I break down and explain what a true bug or a hemipterin is. Um, but just to give a brief statement on what a true bug or a hemipterin is, is any insect in the order hemiptera, and they all contain one unique thing about them, and, th and that is their mouth part, which is the rostrum. It's that beak-like mouth part that the giant water bug is trying to pierce me with to inject venom. But <laughs> like I said, if you haven't seen the assassin bug video, I'd highly go and check it out. Giant water bugs, for the most part, live most of their life in water, surprisingly. <laughs> but um, they can be found in ponds, in streams, in lakes, where they remain under the water, usually camouflage under some sort of debris. Um, sometimes they'll be latched on to plant material. Um, sometimes they can be just floating at the top, but they are found in water. Sometimes they can be very tricky to find, and that is because of their brown body coloration. So their bodies are pretty much camouflaged to look um, like dead leaves, so just leaves resting, uh, you know, in the, in the water, so they can be very, very hard to spot if you're looking for them. These huge insects are predators and will feed on a variety of different prey items. Most feed on insects, but many species have been recorded to feed on fish, tadpoles, frogs, small turtles, believe it or not, and also small snake species as well. Giant water bugs are ambush predators, and so they'll sit and they'll wait patiently for prey to come by. Once prey comes by, they snack it with their raptorial forelegs. Their forelegs resemble those of mantises. They're raptorial, and so as you can see, they bend so that when prey comes by, it's almost like a vice grip. It just closes in, just like that. And then once they latch onto their prey with their raptorial forelegs, they then use their rostrum, that beak-like mouth part, to pierce the body of its prey to inject saliva that is laced with venom. And now this venom does two things. It, the first is it paralyzes its prey, and then the second is that it actually liquefies and breaks down the internal tissues of its prey's body, essentially just turning it to soup. Once the internal structures of its prey's body has been completely liquefied, it then uses its rostrum to then drink out all of the digestive enzymes. On average, the giant water bug can hold its breath underwater for about 15 minutes. 
While underwater, the giant water bug will use these two appendages, uh, called its siphon, to poke out from the water to absorb oxygen. Uh, so its siphon, right now, they're tucked into its abdomen. It'll actually poke them out uh, when it needs to breathe oxygen. But they, they almost look like two, uh, two straws, and so it'll push the siphon out of its abdomen, out of the water, while remaining in the water. So its body will be faced towards, like, down downward. <laughs> and then, oh, there it is right there. Perfect, perfect example. So it'll poke that out of the water while it's in the water, basically breathing oxygen while it's in the water. I know I probably butchered that and made it sound so confusing, but when I build the enclosure for it, I'll try to see if I can get the giant water bug on camera breathing oxygen while it's in the water. There it goes again, it's poking out. <laughs> and now I'm going to just show you guys how to build a basic enclosure for a giant water bug. All right, first things first, you're going to want to pick out your enclosure to house your giant water bug in. I went ahead and got this enclosure. Uh, you don't have to replicate and get the same kind that I have, but you can use something like a critter keeper. Uh, just something that will be able to have your um, giant water bug to swim around in and not be too small since they are large insects. But um, yeah, something like this. I'm just gonna take the lid off. And now giant water bugs, they need some sort of um, object, some sort of structure to be able to latch onto to kind of ground them. Uh, I mean, they can free float, but they typically like to just hold on to something um, that's in the water. So I'm just gonna put this right to the side right there. And so the next thing that you can add are some dead leaves. You don't have to go too crazy with the leaves. Now, as you can see, the leaves are floating at the top, but within a couple hours or however long, they'll actually start to uh, float down. So they'll be completely covering the base of the enclosure. So just have them soak for however long it takes for leaves to kind of drown. One important rule when keeping giant water bugs is to have clean water, uh, typically on a pretty daily basis. You don't ever want to have your enclosure get murky and uh, you don't want to leave dead food in there. Um, so what, what happens over time is that the water is going to start getting uh, cloudy and it's going to start growing bacteria. And so what happens is that if you don't keep the water nice and clean, if you keep it dirty, your giant water bug siphon, those breathing tubes that your giant water bugs, you know, protrude out from the water to absorb the oxygen, which allows them to breathe, it's actually going to get covered. It's going to get coated, um, the siphon, and it's going to have your giant water bug uh, essentially uh, be, become choked. It's going to choke the giant water bug from being able to absorb oxygen from the, the siphon. So if you want to have clean water, you can um, replace the water um, about, let's say, once a week, depending on the size of your enclosure. Um, and also, it, if you put in the factor, if you don't clean dead food out, that's also going to contribute to um, faster, dirty water as well. So the larger the enclosure, the less you'll have to clean and maintain the water. The smaller the tank, the more times you'll have to replace it with clean water. So let's just take that into consideration. One thing that I did forget to add while making this video that you guys are watching right now is a fake like plastic plant-like fixture that you will place at the top of the enclosure. Uh, something that'll float and will just kind of just remain there so that your giant water bug can hang from it. Uh, you can find anything like this at the dollar store. Uh, they'll usually sell like fake bouquet of flowers. You can just kind of snip the ends, um, kind of whatever, accommodate it to whatever size your enclosure is. But my apologies about that. I completely missed putting that in the enclosure. Now, I was going to put the giant water bug right away in its enclosure, but I decided that I'm actually going to get bitten now. 
Uh, I was going to save it for later on, but I'm just going to get it out of the way. And then after I get bitten by the giant water bug, I am then going to put it in its enclosure. <laughs> 